Um, and as you know, uh, subsequent to the European summer course, um, we're today going to prepare, and please understand it's not a lecture, it is a preparation on the Buddhist prophecy, and then on Friday uh, we'll have to deal with two things. One is Sensei's guidance, and the other is uh, a brief summary, which will be in writing, uh, about the experiences of the, of the uh, having to cope with uh, a, uh, a Danto movement, or the beginnings of a Danto movement, in European countries such as Spain, Germany, uh, Austria, and so on. So that will be useful in preparing this lecture. You may, you may wish to sort of mention during the lecture uh, that this or that has happened in Austria or in France or whatever in order to illustrate uh, the way in which the priests are dealing with things. So, um, Sorry, but I didn't know there was a meeting. Yes, sense guidance on Friday. Ah, well then we'll have to send you the written thing okay. and that'll give you everything anyway. I mean, it's merely just to... It'll be just to run through it quickly. It won't be a very long thing anyway. Okay. All right? And that indicates other people, people swapping over here. Yes, the may... Only the go to lecture that come this evening. That may be so, yes. Yes. Well, also, we were going to sign the thing, uh, giving our agreement to the silent prayers. Uh, so a lot of you may not be here ne next Friday. I want to go on the bike. Yes. Well, yes, it was. We were going to do it tonight. Uh, but I suddenly noticed that somehow or other we left Barbara off. <laughs> so, I was... Uh, <laughs> so, we, I think it has to be retyped. Did I give it to you, Sam? Yes. Um, is it possible to... Where does Barbara... Is it possible to put her in there? No, I don't think it is either. Not in place, you have to get... Yes. That's not an original, though. It's a copy, isn't it? Okay. Yeah. Yes. Well, we may have to just... Mm -hmm. mm, very difficult, isn't it? You can't come up Friday? No. No, no. no we'll, we'll have to get it to you, Barbara, on Friday, somehow. Or on... Uh, certainly... I think I'll, I'll try and come on Friday. By the end of the weekend. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right? We'll get it to you somehow to sign. Mm -hmm. All right, great. So, uh, as I've already, I think, written to you in, in, a, in a memo, uh, the, main, the main three items, or perhaps you could say there are four in this summer course, which are really essential if we're going to keep pace with the rest of Europe, and indeed uh, the rest of the world. One is um, uh, the Gosho. The second uh, is Sensei's guidance, and involved in both of those two is the priest's situation in Europe, which I've already mentioned, and finally there is discussions to make sure that the, this message is getting home. And of course, uh, also during the summer courses, this makes five, doesn't it, is to bring out uh, what we have to do to prepare ourselves uh, to deal with the priest's situation if by any chance uh, it should start to become a problem in this country. And basically that means to strengthen our faith in every way possible, I feel. So in that sense, I thought I'd prepare the way um, for members generally in writing an editorial for the UK Express September issue uh, which sort of puts across, I hope, what we want members to understand about the situation with the priesthood. So maybe we could ask, uh, John, could you read that? There are a lot of reading in this, by the way, but we can't help that. This is for September UK Express Editorial. <coughs> so we'll give you a copy of this uh, in the booklet, which I'll talk about in a moment. Uh, it's entitled Maintaining the Purity of the Teachings, Battle of Life and Faith. 
It cannot be just coincidence that September's subject for discussion in our University of Life and Faith series, Work, Career and Mission, is in the same months as our summer courses based on the theme Courage, Conviction, Wholehearted Faith. Many members have already had plentiful actual proof that with the sort of fighting spirit summed up by our summer course slogan, our work and careers advance and expand in absolute parallel with the development of our faith and our growing understanding of the fundamental purpose for which we were born at this time. That is to say, our mission for Kozen Rufin. As an example, when through growing faith, all aspects of a group leader's life, including his or her career or work, begin to advance and expand, the group expands to become a district and then a chapter and vice versa. In the Gosho, the Gift of Rice, Nitrin Dashonin explains this phenomenon by pointing out that the sixth volume of the Lotus Sutra reads, no affairs of life or work are in any way different from the ultimate reality. Further, we are taught that this sentence is an annotation made by Chen Tai the Great in the first volume of his work, Honge Gengi, and refers to the following passage in the 19th chapter of the Lotus Sutra. And whatever he preaches according to his understanding will never contradict the truth. All matters that he preaches pertaining to learning, <coughs> government, language, communication, and daily living will accord with the true law. How wonderful this is, and what confidence and conviction this should give us in forging ahead. Confident that if we give ourselves to Kozen Rupa with wholehearted faith, every aspect of our lives will bloom, including work, career, and above all, our mission for Kozen Rupa. This is indeed the very meaning of the blossoming of the flower of Soka, value creation, in each one of our lives. In the short history of the movement for Kozen Rupu in our country, there has never been a time when this fighting spirit of courage, conviction and wholehearted faith is more important. Soka Gakkai International now stands alone, the only organization in the entire world which is fulfilling the prophecies of Shakyamuni concerning the appearance of immense numbers of bodhisattvas of the earth in the fearful age of Mappo the only organization which, from its birth, under the leadership of successive presidents, has based everything on the Gohonzon and the Gosha, and made unprecedented efforts to expand the movement for Kozen Rupu exactly as Nichiren Daishonin willed, and the only organization which has, as predicted by the Daishonin, as a result of its continuing battle against the negative forces of this world, already had to face two of the three powerful enemies, and is now challenging the third. <clears throat> These great obstacles were defined by Miao on the basis of passages in the 13th chapter of the Lotus Sutra as one, lay people ignorant of Buddhism who denounce the votaries of the Lotus Sutra and attack them, two, arrogant and cunning priests who think they have attained what they have not yet attained and slander the votaries, and three, priests revered as saints and respected by the general public who, in fear of losing fame and profit, fame or profit, induced the secular authorities to persecute the votaries of the Lotus Sutra. This is the history of the organization to which we all owe our faith and understanding of Nichiren Dashonin's teachings and to which we proudly belong. Even as I write, there are a few priests, minions of Nikken, the high priest, who has disgraced the name of the Nichiren Shoshu priesthood, who at this very moment are scuttling secretly about Europe, doing their evil work of trying to establish a temple further to subvert and entice people to leave the true way and instead follow Nikken. Nikken who allows it to be known that it is his guidance which is the Gosho of this age and that he is one of the three treasures of true Buddhism. How pathetic and yet what terrible slander. Never must we allow these priests to rest easy if they enter our country for even though they may just be fools trying to earn the praise of their scurrilous master, they are his arms and legs and his eyes and ears, without which he becomes powerless. Through his evil lust for power, Nikken has already caused much suffering to many. Above all things, while maintaining the momentum of the movement for Kozen Rupu in the United Kingdom, we have to play our part in compelling him to resign. This is our solemn duty as bodhisattvas of the earth. Therefore, by strengthening our faith and understanding of the pure teachings of our ultimate master, Nichiren Daishonin, through the guidance of Sensei, our Master of Life and Kozen Rupu, we should prepare ourselves for whatever may be required of us, for we must win.
that sort of makes sense. So I feel if everyone reads that, not that everyone will, but uh, if most people read it, uh, it gives a sort of starter to uh, all that you're going to try to achieve in summer course and which we then hope will filter out uh, to others. And uh, so there is a summer course book that which you've got which uh, has many faults in it. This is the summer course booklet as issued uh, for European summer course. But it was put together incredibly quickly. A lot of it had to be translated from French or Japanese into English, uh, and therefore uh, the English could be improved. It also, perhaps because there were several countries involved in its production, it also has a completely incomprehensible cross-reference system. <laughs> so I, I advise you not to get involved with that at all. And when I refer to it this evening, I shall just refer to the page number. <laughs> so there's a lot to be done to the book. Also, uh, the book, uh, the one you have, has the, the Go Show in it, but the, uh, the book that was issued in European Summer Course had no Go Show in it. We had to issue it on a separate sheet. Uh, so it will have the Go Show in it. And it will also have um, uh, Sensei's guidance, as it has now, and it'll have this brief account of uh, the Danto movement in Europe. So uh, I hope when, when it's finally churned off for all the courses, it will be much more handleable. Also, I think we can cut back some of the many extracts uh, of Sensei's guidance, uh, which Gicho uh, used in the study preparation. You may or may not know that every, I should think every two to three months, Gicho, in his scholarly and excellent way, has created a sort of compendium. It's all in French or Japanese, mostly in Japanese, but he's completed this compendium of every uh, bit of guidance that sense is given during that period under its appropriate uh, main heading, as it were. It's tremendous work. And so he was using that for this. Therefore, uh, it's quite complex in a way, but I'll try to make it as simple as possible when we do the study prep. Right, so uh, the main uh, base which I, I'm using for this preparation, which Gijo didn't actually use, is Sensei's lecture on the, uh, on the Buddha's prophecy, uh, which he gave in 1968, long before Nikken became a problem. And uh, from that point of view, it's very interesting. And I think that it's a point that should be pointed out to members during summer courses, that this lecture was 1968, that they'll be basing their studies on. So uh, it was, it, it's been, in other words, something that Sensei has been, and, and before him, Mr. Toda, worrying about for a long time. There's nothing new in it. Good. So... Uh, one warning, since there is so much uh, of Sensei's guidance given to you on every single point, I think you've got to be very careful, if I may suggest it, in writing your, uh, uh, preparing your lectures, to make sure that they're not full of passages from Sensei's guidance, because that can get awfully sort of wooden and rather rigid sounding. So please use his guidance. You can by all means say at the beginning of the lecture, this is all based, the lecture I've compiled is all based on Sensei's guidance, uh, which is contained in your summer course booklet. But make the, the, your own lecture, please, really flow in your own words with your own feelings and experiences uh, wherever you wish to put them in. So please feel quite free in that respect. And uh, uh, as you already understand uh, from the editorial, the whole aim of these summer courses is to really bring every every member on the course to face the priest problem in full and to discover that they can accept it based on the Gosho and uh, understand it fully. This really, I feel, is what we're trying to do. And then I feel, too, that we should also make this booklet for the summer course uh, available for people who don't go on the summer courses for sale. 
And I think that's very important, John, if you could remember that, at a price which is, you know, just covering the costs of it. I think it's a good idea. Okay. So now we'll begin. So if you turn to page seven, page seven of your booklet, well, it's in fact rather a large book, isn't it? And as you'll see, this is the basis for preparing your lecture, which is this uh, lecture on the Buddha's prophecy given by Sensei in 1968. Now, we'll read a bit, and I'll try to make it as little as possible, but there is quite a bit of reading to do uh, in order for you to get the, the gist of everything. Uh, and indeed to understand why we're referring to various other guidances of Sensei, which are in this book. So, I don't know who'd like to learn. start leading. Okay. You want to begin, John? Sure. Okay. okay. From the top, page seven. Yeah. Yes. Lecture on the Gosha on the Buddha's Prophecy by Dai Saki Keda, given in 1968, provisional translation. In giving a lecture on the Gosha on the Buddha's Prophecy, Major Writings, Volume 1, page 109, I'd like, firstly, to state the origin of this Gosha, Secondly, to discuss the outline of it. And thirdly, to consider the true meaning of it. One, origin of Gosha. This Gosha was written on the 11th of May, the 10th year of Brunei, 1273, on Sado Island, at about the same time as, or just after the Gosha, on practicing the Buddha's teachings was written. No addressee is indicated on this manuscript. <coughs> Therefore, it is believed that this Gosha was intended for circulation amongst the believers. The whereabouts of Nichiren Daishonin's own handwritten manuscript is uncertain. As for the background to this Gosho, I have already stated this in detail in the introduction to my lecture on the Gosho on practicing the Buddha's teachings. And so, you can refer to it there. So just to chip in there, uh, the background is, of course, that Nichiren Daishonin uh, was still in exile on Sado, having suffered many, many uh, privations whilst he was there, and uh, he moved actually to Ichinosawa where the conditions he was living in became better in April, that is a month before he wrote uh, on the Buddha's uh, prophecy and also on practicing the Buddha's teachings. So in the Gosho practicing the Buddha's teachings, uh, Nichiren Daishonin uh, says quite definitely that the votaries of the Lotus Sutra are bound to face the three powerful enemies. And uh, he's really saying, too, that uh, we can only prove ourselves to be true votaries of the Lotus Sutra if we uh, overcome, seize the opportunity to overcome great obstacles. That's to say, facing the full power of the negative force of life. On the other hand, uh, I think it should be stated and I did do so at the European summer course, that uh, about one year or so ago, Sensei said that the three powerful enemies were inevitable in a Buddhist country because you're facing the whole uh, wrath, if you like, of those who practice and are prominent in other forms of Buddhism. But he said in non-Buddhist countries, this doesn't necessarily need to be so. And that by wisdom and good sense, we can actually prevent the three powerful enemies from appearing, even though we are advancing strongly towards Kosen Rufu. So there is this difference between the Buddhist and the non-Buddhist country for, I think, quite understandable reasons. Okay, John. As the title on the Buddha's prophecy indicates, this Gosho has great significance as a document where Nichiren Daishonin declared his prophecy of Kozen Rupu, and it is a piece of writing filled with the absolute conviction of the true Buddha. I am sure he wrote it with his whole life, as if he were leaving his will to his disciples. As he states in this Gosho, Twenty-one years ago, I, Nitrian, understood what was to come. Since then, I have suffered persecution day after day and month after month. 
In the last two or three years, among other things, I was almost put to death. The chances are one in 10,000 that I will survive the year or even the months. If anyone questions these things, let him ask my disciples for details. So this is in the last part of the Gosho uh, on the Buddha's prophecy, that passage. If you want to look it up in your books, it's page 116 of the major writings. 116. Mm. And John? One can feel the courage and compassion of the Daishonin's heart permeating this passage, compelling him to write it. Death was certain, and he entrusted his disciples with everything. Despite being in the midst of such a terrible crisis, he was composed and was able to write in this way. Furthermore, he says, I pray that before anything else I can guide to the truth the Sovereign and those others who persecuted me. I will tell the Buddha about all the disciples who have aided me. This is the composed and expansive state of life of the true Buddha, and is also an example of great jihu. So that passage too is part of the same uh, paragraph as the, uh, as the previous one, on page 117 of Major Writings. Okay? President Toda commented on this Gosho. On closely examining this Gosho, it is absolutely clear that the Daishonin's conviction of the true Buddha is as firm as a rock, and his spirit soar to the sky as the votary of the Lotus Sutra in the latter day of the law. Unconcerned with the danger to his own life, nor afraid of death, he is composed and only concerned with teaching his disciples. This Gosho can have a great impact on those who are taking action to promote Kozen Rupu, and I am convinced that this writing makes one feel how great the Buddha's prophecy is, and that not one false word or lie is contained within it. And two, outline of this Gosho. In this Gosho, as the title indicates, the Buddha's prophecy is revealed. The Daishonin first states that he substantiated all of Shakyamuni's prophecies and pronounces with great conviction that he himself is the true Buddha for the age of Mappo. Then he reveals the primary object of this writing, which is the prophecy of Nichiren Daishonin, the true Buddha. The Gosho can be divided into seven sections so as follows. Those of you, have you all got your, your major writings with you? All right? I'll just give you the, the... Then I can give you the breakdown. It's quite useful to have that breakdown into seven sections of the Gosho. You all got it ready? On page 109 of volume 1. So the first section runs from page 109 through to over the page 110, the end of the top paragraph, but those of Tiantai and Dengyo. That is section one, or chapter one, you might call it. Two, which we're going to study partly this evening, actually just two paragraphs of it, begins, question, you're not the only person living in this 500-year period, and goes down to halfway down page 111. Perfect teaching when they see or hear of him. All got it? Please shout if you haven't. And then uh, chapter 3, which we're also dealing with in this lecture, begins questioning, comparing the former and middle days, and goes right the way through to page 113, uh, the end of the first paragraph, which are both the initial stages of practice. Then 4, the question, how can you be certain that you are the votary, etc., uh, down to, over the page, to page 114, end of the second paragraph, an extremely evil man. Okay? Then the next one begins, question, you certainly fit the Buddha's prophecies, and goes to page 115, halfway down, the word within indicates that the other three lands were excluded. Who got it? The next chapter six. Question you have filled the Buddha's pro prophecy and then down to, over the page, to 116. Uh, nearly the end, the end of the penultimate paragraph. Wise men can see omens and what they foretell as snakes know the way of snakes. And then uh, to the end of the Gosho is chapter 7. 
So actually, in the lecture, we're just using uh, two paragraphs from uh, section two. Section three, again, it's just a one or a two paragraphs again. And then number seven, the final chapter. Okay. Good. All right, John, can you just read on? So, seven sections as follows. First, Shakyamuni's prophecy... No, uh, you no need to go through it all. I think... Should we? Wait a minute. Well, maybe it's a good idea. Okay, yes. First, uh, Shakyamuni's prophecy. Second, the inevitability of persecutions in the age of Mappo is explained. Third, that Kozen Rupa of the Gohonzon of the essential teaching should be achieved in the time of Mappo. Fourth, that Nichiren Daishonin's advent into the world is as the true Buddha for the age of Mappo. Fifth, that there is no Buddhism in India and China. Sixth, the true Buddha's prophecy is revealed. And seventh, the course of transmission in spreading Kozen Rupa is indicated. This is the outline of the whole Gosha. Now, I'd like to explain the outline of each section. So, we'll only take the sections that we're concerned with. So, if you go to page nine in your books, the second section of this Gosho clarifies. Have you all got it? All right, John. The second section of this Gosho clarifies that persecutions would occur during the time of Mapo. Nichiren Daishonin is overjoyed to be born in that period, and he states that the reason for this is that the degree of persecutions is greater in Mapo than in any other period. First, he quotes the passage from the Hoshi, 10th chapter of the Lotus Sutra, <coughs> which reads, how much worse will it be in the world after his passing? And refers to a passage from priest Chi Tu, a disciple of the great teacher Miao Lo, and another from Dengyo's Keshuku. Finally, he emphasizes the Buddha's statement that persecutions are bound to take place during the time of Mako, which is the time referred to by the words, how much worse will it be in the time after his passing? Namely, by quoting the Buddha's statement and other theses and explanations, he indicates that the persecutions are that persecutions are always suffered by the votary of the Lotus Sutra in the time of Mappa, mm -hmm. the votary of the true and perfect teaching. Now, maybe someone else would like to read the paragraphs in the Gosho, if you've got the major writings with you. All right, Robert. Uh, bottom of page 110. You'll have to seek it out in, if you haven't got your major writings. It's the bottom of... Uh, oh, I'm afraid I haven't checked it. <laughs> the great teacher Dengo says, <coughs> you've got a question, you are, the, the first question was you are not the only person living in this 500 year period. And there's a long paragraph after that. Uh, and then we come to, I think, what is another paragraph, but it isn't indented. The great teacher Dengo said. Oh, got it? Okay, shall we read that, Robert? The great teacher Dengo said, the propagation of the true teaching will begin in the age when the middle day of the law ends and the latter day opens, in a land to the east of Tang and to the west of Hatsu, among people stained by the five impurities who live in a time of conflict. The sutra says, since hatred and jealousy abound even during the lifetime of the Buddha, how much worse would it be in the world after his passing? There is good reason for this statement. The great teacher Dengo wrote as though describing his own day, but actually he was referring to the present time. That is what gives such profound meaning to his words, the former and middle days are almost over, and the latter day is near at hand. The sutra states, devils, people under their influence, spirits of the heavens and seas, sinister, sinister demons called Yasha, demons which drain human vitality, and others, will seize the advantage. <coughs> Another portion of the sutra details these others. Yasha, nimble demons, hungry demons, demons of filth, vengeful demons, red, orange, black, and blue demons, and so on. These passages explain that those who in previous lifetimes embraced the four tastes, or the three teachings, Brahmanism, or the doctrines of humanity in heaven, appear in this life as devils, spirits, or human beings who persecute the virtue of the true and perfect teaching when they see or hear of him. So, thank you. So, of course, uh, the meaning of that last part uh, is that those who slander by rejecting 
the Lotus Sutra and the teachings of Nichiren Daishonin, but particularly uh, those who rejected the Lotus Sutra become enemies and slandered it, become enemies of the Lotus Sutra in this lifetime. So all those things are, are in the uh, Buddhist dictionary, but does anyone want me to go through them, the five impurities and doctrines of humanity and heaven? They're, they're all people who followed uh, the, prov the provisional teachings or the earliest teachings, but in the Buddhist dictionary. Okay, good, all right. So now, we now turn to various of Sensei's uh, guidances which relate to that particular paragraph. So, they're contained pages 13 to 17 in your books, summer course books. Pages 13 to 17. All right? Now, not all of this is necessary, I think. So, uh, we'll see how much we can, we can read to get the gist of it. Robert, could you continue to read 7-1? Uh, That's the first one. 7-1. Seven, 7-1. One. Seven, one, those who dedicate themselves to the Lotus Sutra will be expelled <laughs> by evil authorities. To finish, I would like to read the following passage from the Gosha. It is because I, Nichiren, Shantan Yohoren Geko, that I am despised, attacked and exiled, and I have to undergo a lot of difficulties. Nevertheless, I propagate the mystic law. Am I not a devotee of the Lotus Sutra? When one practices the mystic law and encounters all sorts of difficulties, one is teaching the true law to others. This is what we call the practice of the Lotus Sutra. This is the same for us in Sophie Gagai International. Through our behaviour, we are directly related with Nichiren Daishan. While undergoing such difficulties, we are propagating the law throughout the entire world, and we are ceaselessly going forward. We, the practitioners of the Lotus Sutra, are living in accord with the mystic law. So I think there, we, it's an important point. We have to point out that whilst benefits uh, are are uh, inevitable if you practice sincerely. Difficulties are also uh, inevitable. And uh, uh, we shouldn't, we should make that clear. So we should not be surprised when obstacles face us, either individually or as a movement. And of course, without these challenges, we cannot grow. So I'm sure each of you can think of some experience where a district or a group or even a whole chapter faced an obstacle of some sort. And always, in the end, it strengthens the whole chapter and they come out of it stronger. And it's the same with individuals, isn't it? So this is an important lesson to bring home. So can you read on, Robert, when you finish your notes? Yeah, fine. Seven three. Some evil priests are using the authorities. In the Gosho it says, in the fifth chapter of the Lotus Sutra, it says that in the period of Mappo will appear without fail the practitioner of the Lotus Sutra. As you can see, that's rather strange English. So it should really read, it says that in the period of Mappo, the votary, votaries of the Lotus Sutra will appear without fail. But you must forgive those for the moment. We'll get them corrected. Yes? At that time, the priests keeping the precepts and those who have destroyed them gathered in huge number, was announced them to the authorities in order to have the votary of the Lotus Sutra exiled or killed. So this is a very important paragraph from the fifth chapter of the Lotus Sutra, that it is the priests who try to destroy the votaries of the Lotus Sutra. And then it goes on to say, Nichiren Daishonin says the one who persecutes, exiles, or kills the Bodhi of the Lotus Sutra is a priest. This is what is happening once more with Nikken using the authorities to persecute us in accord with the predictions of the Lotus Sutra. Should be his authority, using his authority to persecute us. So again, emphasizing this point that it is priests who try to destroy uh, the, the laity and thereby the movement for Kosen Rufu. 
Sorry. Sorry. No. No, no, no. No. The, yeah, these are his various. This is. No, I know that. That was given in Europe now or when? Do we have dates for when these guidances were? Well, there should be. We can find out. Yes, we have to find that out and make sure it's put in the books. I think it's quite important. Yes, it is important. Yeah, that's right. But as far as I'm aware, they're very recent. They're all within the last one year as far as I'm aware, except for the, except for the, the, the lecture on the Gosha, which is 1968. All right? Okay, so I think you can leave out 7.4 and 7.5 completely, and then start again with 7.6. 7.6, mad with jealousy. <laughs> Why did they betray Nitrin Daishoni? Nichiko Shonin explains that the five heretical priests were unhappy with the attitude of Nikko Shonin who insisted on strictly respecting the prohibition on visiting the Shinto shrine and the statements of the Risho and Kokuro. Deep down, I think they were very, they were very jealous of Nikko Shonin. Nishi and Nishiro were older and the three others younger. But they believed themselves to be Nichirindai Shonin's main disciples. President Toda said... A typical, typical example of jealousy is Devadatta. Such strong feelings of jealousy distort the normal way of thinking. Evil can penetrate a troubled heart and create destructiveness and scheming. Devadatta, because he was jealous of Shakyamuni, devised a plan to assassinate him and divide the Buddhist community. The five heretical priests went against the mystic law, and their jealousy created disunity among Nichiren Doshon's disciples. And nothing has changed. The Nirvana Sutra <coughs> describes the evil priests of Mako. From the outside, they look like people of wisdom and compassion. But inside, there is huge jealousy and greed. Thank you. So, this is the big question that you can ask in relation to that. Why should, why should Niken, as high priest of Nichiren Shoshu, betray Nichiren Daishonin? Which he has done. And again, of course, the answer is this extraordinary jealousy. So strong that it's even, even if it was Sensei he was jealous of, or the progress and prosperity of the, of the uh, Soka Gakkai, uh, in the end it brought him uh, to actually betray Nichiren Daishonin himself. And this was exactly what happened to the five elder priests. Putting in uh, trying to put Nichiren Daishonin in a position lower than himself. So it's no wonder he denigrates us and uh, rejects us and uh, did this absurd, cra it's all crazy, but he did this absurd thing of uh, excommunicating 15 million or whatever it is, believers. Okay, then we can, uh, just the top paragraph, Robert, is enough of 7-7. Seven, seven. If we don't keep our promise, we betray our master. After Nitrin Daishonin's death, the system was established to guard their master's grave. Eighteen priests were supposed to protect the grave every month at Mount Minerva. But the five priests did not keep their promise. Nitrin Daishonin had requested in his will that he wished to have the statue of Shakyamuni that was once given to him as a present simply installed on his grave, but that it should not be used as an object of worship. That did not happen. Well, that's, I think the first point is, the most, is, is an important example anyway. Then I don't think you need worry about the next four short paragraphs and start again at 7, 8. Never bow down to evil. Same Gosho explains what those who stop practicing have in common because of fear. The cowards forget immediately the teaching. Their greed is strong and they harbor <coughs> lots of doubts. The fundamentally pitiful and base nature of the five priests appeared at the time of difficulties. Flattering the authorities in the way the group of Nitrin Shoshu priests did during the Second World War, and the priesthood's present extreme corruption, are the absolute opposite of the dignified spirit of Fuji Shakushinyo, the spirit of giving wholeheartedly without begrudging one's life, of Nitrin Daishonin. Also, the five priests considered Shakyamuni as their object of worship. They neglected the Gohonsons inscribed by Nitrin Daishonin 
They buried them with the bodies of the deceased. They discarded the Gosho, written in Kana, popular language, by burning them, losing them and reusing them to commit a serious slander of the law. I don't quite know what that means, losing them and reusing them. Uh, uh, they, they wash it and reusing the paper again. Oh, I see, I see. Oh, disgusting. Reusing paper. Oh, right. Reusing the paper. I see. Well, we better make that clear. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> Go on, uh, read on, Robert. <laughs> this attitude demonstrates an absolute lack of faith. They were using the Gohonsan as a means of inflating their own ego. They developed their own theories. They neglected the words of Nichiren Darshonin. And because of their arrogance, they degraded Nichiren Darshonin's teachings. Now the descendants of these five heretical priests have appeared. We can see them creating the same kind of destruction of the Buddhist law as the five priests in the treatise on the reputation of the five priests. In this sense, it is our task to write down the details how much destruction they are causing to the Buddhist law, and to speak out, as Nikko Shonin did, to let people know the worthiness of our attitude. So here Sensei is, is pointing out why uh, they have remonstrated so strongly, unceasingly, uh, against Nikken, in order to make clear uh, what he is actually doing. Of course, the fact that he doesn't read any of these remonstrations, or may only glance at them, and, they, uh, and even his, his minions may not even show, it, show them to him. But nevertheless, uh, Sensei uh, says we cannot let up. We have to continue with this sort of remonstration, uh, one form or another. And of course, recently, uh, more than, well more than a hundred priests now have uh, uh, declared, both within the Head Temple and those who have actually seceded, uh, there are two movements in the Head Temple, as you know. One was called the Something Winds, What's it called? New the New Winds, yes. And there is another with rather a long title. But they have all stood up and are remonstrating against the High Priest. And uh, according to the priests who visited Europe, uh, this is only just the beginning and there will be more to come. That was the way they put it. So I think you can, we no need to read further there. Uh, and you might like to read yourselves 710, singing with great joy. In other words, in facing this obstacle, uh, we should not be cast down. On the contrary, we should realize what an incredible, uh, important mission in the history of the movement Kosen Rufu we have. And it's because of the great advance of the Soka Gakkai International that uh, the time became ripe for the 